I just unboxed this thing and I am honestly shocked at how small this is. This is an entire RTX GPU that yes, it's called the Pocket AI and it can literally slip out of my pocket in like no, fairly normal sized pants, guys. Uh, anyway, <laughs> no problem whatsoever. It is an RTX GPU that can fit in your pocket. It is smaller than the palm of your hand compared to like a phone. It's actually shorter than the phone compared to a tiny mini PC it is significantly tinier. The Steam Deck absolutely dwarfs this thing. This is the new OLED one I just got, by the way. Anyway, uh, my wife's old 2020 laptop, I'm actually curious if this thing can get brought back to life using the Pocket AI. You cannot play games on this thing. This uh, is a very cool piece of technology. It's not real, I mean, you can tell by the name. This is called the Pocket AI. This is not exactly designed for gaming, although that's what I'm gonna focus on testing in this video, because that's kind of what my channel is more about. With its four gigabytes of dedicated VRAM and an NVIDIA A500 GPU, this is on a 30 watt power limit. You literally just power with a little USB uh, power block, like you would a cell phone. Uh, plug it into a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 slot and suddenly you now have an RTX GPU, albeit a small and not super powerful one, uh, onto whatever device you're using it with. The question is, is that worth it? Now, I'm gonna be using this for gaming tests in this video, uh, although I think really a device like this is more designed for if you're on maybe a not super powerful laptop with no dedicated GPU, but you still need to run some uh, software that is best accelerated with NVIDIA's CUDA cores, AI workloads, things like that. Although again, have to have reasonable expectations in mind. But with that being said, let's start with, can this thing make my wife's laptop actually play games? If you hear a ton of fan noise in the background, it's not the Pocket AI. We're gonna run the laptop just using its native uh, integrated GPU. Uh, we're gonna run at native resolution 1920 by 1200. Uh, this is a a 60 hertz screen of that uh, that resolution. Now I've got the graphic settings set to low preset, but I turned off upscaling uh, so we can kind of scroll down here so you can see what we've got. And let's go ahead and kick the run benchmark button. Uh, you can see here Cyberpunk is not running well at these settings. We're getting about seven frames per second in this scene. So that's a bit rough here. But anyway, let's go ahead and um, maybe fast forward to the final results and we'll try one more test uh, without the the uh, pocket AI maybe uh, upscaling as much as possible. All right we'll try one more benchmark run on the laptop's integrated GPU and we're going to try it on um, FSR let's go performance mode rather than ultra performance mode so this can be a 50% per access resolution scale all right, it's looking like FSR performance is not saving our performance, still completely unplayable on the integrated GPU. Now, granted, we could obviously play games that are less demanding than Cyberpunk, but, um, you know, I thought I'd start here. It's a well-known benchmark, and it's also extremely scalable. Like, something like this is quite playable on a Steam Deck, for example, and maybe we'll even throw that in here as a comparison. And I'm just very curious if our... Uh, if our pocket AI will get us anything like a playable experience in this game. All right, now we've got the pocket AI plugged in. I should mention it comes with this little like uh, plasticky cover case. I think that's also gonna get it uh, raised up a little bit to allow uh, airflow and things like that. And we do have, um, you know, a power plug and then a, a display port, not display port, geez, a Thunderbolt port, which is going into the laptop. So we're now up and running on the eGPU. Let's go ahead and see if we do any better. Currently, we're going to run at native resolution, low settings, same as we did initially on the integrated GPU. And I'm hopeful that we're going to go ahead and do better here. Let's, let's find out. I'll say that it is certainly better performance, like significantly better performance, but maybe Cyberpunk was just too ambitious of a target here because uh, yeah, we're getting, you know, 20 frames per second or so in the scene. It is going over that at times. Now I'm, I am noticing that the CPU does appear to be working pretty hard here. So I, I'm curious if we're at all CPU limited in, in this situation, you know, the Ram's not super fast here either, that kind of a thing. So uh, and look, uh, in this scene, we're actually getting up to around 39, 40 FPS. It's an easier scene. 
So I'm curious if there is any kind of a CPU limitation happening. So I am going to want to test out this eGPU on a stronger base platform to see if it's able to do better. But for now, it's looking like we're not getting an amazing experience, but it is a significant improvement over what we got with the iGPU. So at least we do have that, even if it's not getting us to a uh, what I would consider particularly usable experience. Now, I do want to check if DLSS is going to work. So let's go with DLSS performance instead of FSR performance, since, again, uh, one of the whole points of this thing is that it is an RTX GPU, uh, not just some random GPU, which does get you access to NVIDIA's Tensor cores and RT cores. So the DLSS upscaler usually looks better than things like FSR and XESS, but you require an RTX card with Tensor cores in order to run it. Uh, this little pocket GPU does have 64 Tensor cores and 16 RT cores. Now, uh, the RT cores might be useful in some kind of a, um, uh, what would you call it? Some kind of a uh, compute workload, maybe. Uh, maybe there's Blender or something like that that could leverage the RT cores. I just don't think our gaming performance is at a place where that makes a lot of sense. Um, hmm, it's not looking like our performance got much better here. Maybe in the video you guys are watching, I could edit in a side-by-side, -side, but at least to me, it's looking like we're very similar to where we were without DLSS. Which begs the question, is it even working properly? Or this could play into my idea that it's possible that we could be at least somewhat CPU limited by the rest of the platform. So um, I think our next job will be to test this out on another system that could uh, support a CPU performance that I know could hit 60 frames per second and then um, see where we go from there. Since I already had the Steam Deck out for a size comparison, how we look at it, how it runs. Now it is gonna be at 1280 by 800, but I went to the low preset, and uh, so I would match the settings of the other devices, and this will be running at the native resolution of the Steam Deck. This is the Steam Deck OLED. And so this is a lower resolution, but same graphics settings than the native resolution on the laptop. However, the laptop we also tried out in, uh, you know, upscaling performance mode, which would have been 600p. And this is actually rendering at a 800p native, but with no upscaling on top. So not exactly an apples to apples comparison here with the Steam Deck. But if you want to look at how it's running, it looks like we are over 30 frames per second at native resolution here in this bar scene which is absolutely crushing what we saw on the the other device. This also means we could comfortably lock to a 30 FPS frame rate cap, which is likely what I would actually do to play the game and just get a consistent experience. So uh, it does look like uh, here we're even getting up into the 40s. So overall, it looks like the Steam Deck is significantly more capable than what we were seeing from the laptop, even with the uh, Pocket AI plugged in. However, you know, um, I did have questions about whether we were hitting any CPU limitation on the Pocket AI. So our next job will be to plug into a more powerful baseline PC than what we got off of that laptop. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and do next. I think we'll put it into my um, recent mini PC I got from Minis Forum. All right, you can see the little uh, mini PC in the bottom left corner now, and we're at the same graphic settings, although this is now 1080p without uh, 1920 by 1200 that we had on the laptop, and this is now without the Pocket AI. And we're gonna go ahead and see what we can do here. It's looking like we are getting over 40 frames per second, dipping into the 30s a little bit here. And again, this is running at, um, the full 1920 by 1080p, no upscaling, although at the low preset in the game. So you can see that we are certainly doing better than we were on the uh, laptop-based system, and I think we are also more powerful than what we saw in the Steam Deck. Keep in mind this is a much more powerful integrated GPU than what the Steam Deck has, and it's running at a much higher power consumption number. You can see that we're up around 60 watts on this system. But again, uh, frame rate numbers are pretty good. Um, again, frame rate numbers are somewhat similar to what we were getting on the Steam Deck, but remember we're running at a native 1920 by 1080, whereas the Steam Deck was running at a lower native rendering resolution. The question is, are we going to get uh, as good or better performance out of our little 
mini GPU, but I also want to see um, uh, what we can do with FSR on the system and compare it to DLSS. So let's go ahead and go FSR performance mode to get all the performance we can out of this thing. And let's go ahead and see the, how that compares. And again, I'll be very interested to see how it compares to running DLSS on the same system. Again, if it actually seems to be running, we didn't get much performance improvement when we did it on the laptop. But again, I'm curious how limited we were by the laptops. Um, platform, and that's why this uh, newer mini PC platform is interesting. It looks like in FSR performance mode, the mini PC is able to be over 60 frames per second in this bar scene, which is certainly the best performance we've seen so far out of anything. Now things do look a little bit pixelated and shimmery using that um, uh, using FSR at the performance mode here, but again, we're running Cyberpunk on a little mini PC. But will, how will the Pocket AI fare in comparison? Let's go ahead and finish our benchmark run. All right, we now have the Pocket AI set up and again running at the same low configuration. Let's go ahead and see how we do. This is native resolution with no upscaling. And again, we're on the mini PC with a 7840 uh, APU. Again, we're using the... Uh, the Pocket AI is our GPU in the system, but we have the more powerful modern CPU compared to the old laptop. So we're hoping for better performance than we saw on the laptop. However, it's really looking like this is about what this eGPU is capable of here. Uh, we're down in the teens in the, uh, the bar scene here at 1080p resolution. And uh, that just does seem to be how powerful the eGPU is. Remember on the built-in APU uh, with the latest AMD architecture and everything like that, uh, you know, we had a lot better performance. Now keep in mind, there's a big wattage difference here. This little pocket AI is uh, coming in around 25 watts, whereas the uh, iGPU that um, comes in this mini PC goes all the way up to something like 60 watts. And this is also an older architecture for the NVIDIA um, Pocket AI. And it's, again, I, I really just don't think gaming is what this thing is totally designed for. Uh, when this benchmark run ends, I am still interested in taking a look at um, if DLSS can push its performance a bit further in this situation. But um, yeah, overall, it's looking like my dreams of a good gaming performance on this thing are not quite living up to where I wanted them to be. Let's go ahead and go DLSS performance mode. So again, that'll be like a 540p internal resolution, uh, trying to reconstruct up to a 1080p output image. So again, taking advantage of the fact that it is RTX, we do have access to DLSS. Um, let's go ahead and see if we get any kind of a performance bump out of that. And it's, just not a lot. <laughs> this, this might be a little better than we were before, but um, we're still well under 30 frames per second. So my, my final thoughts here are pretty much that this did give us significantly better performance than we got on the laptop, but it's just not a high level of performance. And, and a modern APU uh, like we're seeing on this uh, mini PC can significantly outperform this in gaming. However, um, again, what this is really designed for is more of some kind of a compute workload for a laptop. Uh, maybe you have an older laptop, this could get you some more performance out of it. I really think its form factors are uh, very cool. Uh, I would like to see a newer architecture. We know uh, NVIDIA's uh, 40th generation GPUs, 40 gen GPUs are a lot more power efficient than their older ones. So I'm curious what we could get out of some kind of a more updated revision out of this. And for gaming purposes, it would be cool if it also had a display output directly from the eGPU. But anyway, uh, that's what I've got for you guys today and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.